I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let a record show that a quorum of members is present, that a meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. It's 6 o'clock. If you would, please stand with me as Mr. Kidd gives our invocation and Mr. Sanders leads us in our pledges of allegiance. If you'd like to, uh, please bow your heads and join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for your grace. Dear God, just uh, thank you uh, for those who have fought for our country and gave the ultimate sacrifice those that have family members that are serving lord we just thank you for for all of our servicemen and our veterans lord and and we just keep remembering them Dear god uh, be with us tonight and uh, just guide and direct us to uh to uh, do our best to, to serve your children lord thank you for everybody in this room and in their hearts uh for for service lord thank you for our students and uh be with them, help them have a, a wonderful Thanksgiving. We have so much to be thankful for, Lord, and, and just thank you for the many blessings that you bestowed upon this community and this district. And uh, just watch over us tonight as we, we do business and just uh, be with us in this room. Thank you for loving us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me as we show our patriotism to our country and our state. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you very much, Mr. <coughs> Kidd, Mr. Sanders. Uh, start off with uh, item 2A. Special District Recognition, Conroe ISD National Merit Scholarship Student Recognition. Dr. Stockton. All right, we have some very special young people to recognize today. I'll ask Mr. Jim Caker, Assistant Superintendent for Secondary Education, to come make the presentation. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. Good evening, President Husbands, Dr. Stockton, members of the board. I'm proud to be here this evening to recognize a fine group of young men and women and celebrate their significant academic accomplishments. Tonight we're celebrating seniors who have been recognized for their performance on the PSAT that was taken in October of their junior year. Before we introduce our honorees, I would like to thank those that have helped them reach this point. With us this evening representing our high school campuses are principals Tommy Johnson, Mark Merrill, Mark Weatherly, Mike Papadimitrio, and Jerry Gambertolio. Would you please stand? By offering a rigorous and varied curriculum, our campuses do an outstanding job of preparing our students to be successful. Thank you to our great teachers and administrators for their fine work. While we are extremely proud of the efforts of our campuses, we understand that the journey of these high achieving students starts at home. Will the parents, grandparents, and guardians of these students please stand to be honored at this time? And I know we have quite a few with us. Yeah. We will now introduce our two groups of students that have been identified by the College Board and the National Merit Scholarship Program. These awards are not mutually exclusive, so a student may be recognized in more than one group. The National Merit Scholarship Program is an academic competition for recognition and scholarship that began in 1955. Of the approximately 1.5 million entrants into the competition each year, about 16,000 students are notified that they have qualified as a National Merit Semifinalist. These National Merit Semifinalists finalists represent the top 1% of scores in their respective states. It should be noted that the state of Texas has the eighth highest qualifying score in the nation, making the accomplishments of these young men and women even more impressive. Our national merit semifinalists this year are, and I would share with you that while we have many students here, there are a number of students that are on the list that I'll call their names that were not able to make it. And as you can understand why, they're all very busy kids. So uh, Ryan Bailey, Kristen Bonet, 
Malia Cowan, Andrew Daugherty, Neva Imai, Vadish Ganesh, Zachary Hill, Mariel Kelly, Sebastian Lunga, Austin Newt, Jake Poffler, Kaylee Prochaska, Franklin Shin, Evelyn Tran, Bruno Walsic, Jessica Zhang, Frederico Aguiki, Thomas Benavides, Scott Curtis, Jack Herta Jordan. <laughs> How'd I do on that, Jack? Casey Irwin, we'll get there. Nicholas Monks, Michael Purcell, Carlos Rufo, Nevaditha, Selva Jaraj, Mohit Tallwalker, and Ian Tudor, our National Merit Semifinalist. parents who want to, yeah. you're welcome to line up in front. That's Hey, good job. Great job. Congratulations. The College Board's National Hispanic Recognition Program identifies outcomes academically outstanding Hispanic Latino high school students. Each year the National Hispanic Recognition Program honors nearly 5,000 of the highest scoring students from approximately 235,000 Hispanic Latino juniors who took the PSAT. Our National Hispanic Scholars are Israel Lopez, Cesar Martinez, Jacob Poston, Yasmin Santana, Alexis McAllister, Alexis Wirt, Julian Calderon Espino, Lindsay Colorado, Daniel Duran, Micah Gonzalez, Daniel Rodriguez Tirad, Daniela, I'm sorry. <laughs> Please forgive me. Andrea Santa Cruz, Kyle Smith. Juliana Stewart, 
It's all right if y'all were in the picture. Better Noah Chapman. Oh. Zivon Vasquez. Thomas Achin Chiditz. <clears throat> Zachariah Al Magbarab. Pablo Alvarado. Federico Aquinaki, Matthew Ashenbrenner, Thomas Benavides, Jay Bott, Daniela Braniff, Gabriel Carbajal, Mariana Castillo, Alan Contreras Castillo, Hugh Casculula, Mallory Eatson, Victoria Faulkner, Elisa Fuentes, Sebastian Garcia Casa, Asa Graham, Jacob Grimm, Francesca Guerrero Jurado, Palmer Johnson, Lorena Maldonado, Aiden McQuaid, <clears throat> Nicholas Monks, Broderick Moore, Mauricio Montes. Nicole Soriano, Kieran Stein, Joseph Tombari, Andre Turiati, Andrea Vangas Loredo, Gavin Webster. Carlos Rubio. Congratulations, everyone. real quick want to take a moment um we have standing before us here today will y'all come back up real quick i, I want y'all to be up here too 27 of the top students out of 1.5 million taking the psat and 47 of the top hispanic latino students in the country taking the psat this is an incredible testimony to your hard work abigail adams said learning is not attained by chance it must be sought for with ardor and attended to with diligence. Students, you have done just that. The dedication and hard work you have shown will serve you well throughout your life. We are, as Board of Trustees, we are all very proud of you. Congratulations. Those of you that have already done it, you can come back up. I just wanted to be honored one more time. And we're going to get to shake your hands. If you will, if you want, shake my hair. And start in all of the hair. No matter which order. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations.
Item 2B, Special District Recognition. Dr. Stockton? Yeah, uh, tonight we get the opportunity to recognize Jessica Powell for her four years of service. And I've, I've been blessed to not only be the superintendent for 14 years, but also to work with um, numerous school board members and, and all have done a great job. And Jessica certainly falls into that category. So if Mr. Husbands and Jessica, if you'll join us up front. not very um, not one for words but I would like to just say thank you guys very much for such an interesting experience over the last four years I started my 30th birthday off with elect being elected to the school board and a lot has changed in four years and I'm gonna miss being a part of this board and I miss being part of the district it's the first time in, in gosh I've been in this district since I was in the eighth grade so wow. um, as a professional since 2005 and I'm gonna really miss being active in Conroe ISD, but I still live here and I still pay taxes here and I still will be involved we with that. this Thank board. <laughs> I bought a house too, so you get more taxes from me now. But uh, I'll, I'll still be here and I'll still be active and I'd like to still be a voice for the teachers in Conroe ISD, teachers and, and ESPs and the other staff for Conroe ISD, especially our students. They deserve the very best and I think we do our best to give them what they deserve, but uh, always takes a good, community member, parent, you know, teacher to keep you guys informed about what's happening out there and and uh, I hope that I can continue to do that as a community member now. So thanks very much. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, item 2 2C. Uh, the next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policy can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to the address of the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation. Delegations of five or more must appoint a representative to present their views to the board. Mrs. Godfrey, would you please call the first person? I was going to interrupt just a moment. Yes. Uh, parents, you, you are welcome to stay or you are welcome to leave. Uh, you. Whatever you like to do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. We call um, Carrie Freemeyer. <clears throat> I don't need a mic 
microphone. I know you guys can hear me perfectly. <laughs> Good evening, members of the school board, Dr. Stockton, President Husband. <clears throat> Why fix what isn't broken? I have come here today to speak of a mutual vested interest, our children and our highly distinguished school districts. I am just one voice of many concerned citizens and Conroe ISD public school employees alarmed and offended by House Bill 1842 of the 84th legislative session, which undermines and destroys the very principles of our public education system by <coughs> mimicking charter school flexibility. Why fix what isn't broken? Under this initiative, termed the District of Innovation, a committee is allowed to adjust important facets of a school district, such as the attendance rule, student discipline, teacher appraisal requirements, use of planning periods, class size ratios, as well as school start dates, to name a few. Allowing this flexibility to adjust brings up several questions I have. What will happen to our highly qualified teacher status? What will happen to our special populations if class size ratios are adjusted? What will happen to our teacher salaries and planning periods? Again, I ask you, why fix what isn't broken? Our school district is so highly regarded that other districts emulate what we have. Let us stick to the system we have in place. Thanks to our integrated core team of administrators, coordinators, directors, and you, members of the board, Mr. President Husbands, our large district has been highly ranked and has remained in excellent top percentile standings because of thoroughly research-based decisions you have made. If our district and school board are just concerned about changing the school calendar and hiring outside expertise as CTE instructors, and there is no other way to make these adjustments, then by all means, let that be considered in the plan. However, Sorry, I'm yelling. <laughs> I implore you and challenge you, members of the board, Mr. President Husbands, to investigate thoroughly the stipulations proposed in this plan. Make sure that you understand that the District of Innovation concept is not just about gaining local control, but altering and adhering to specified provisions that will impede the success and faith in our public school system. And remember, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Carrie. We, we appreciate your passion. Uh, every day in the classroom. Yes. <laughs> the, this is not an agenda item, so it's not open for discussion. But I will tell you that we've, we've we met yes. and we've received feedback. And there's a lot of confusion. A lot of unanswered questions That's um, and our intent was to look at the possibility of starting school earlier because that's feedback that we get a lot of feedback if we could start a little bit earlier we could get out before June possibly have the October date off so that was our intent the other things are, are the, the the fear of bad consequences is not what we're about so we're going to go back to the district level committee tomorrow and we're going to talk to them about eliminating all of those things except a flexible start date and then when we come back to the board you'll have the opportunity to um to look at an early start date or not but um i think that alleviates that concern we did check with tea we can put one item on our plan oh, excellent. yeah so we've done some checking on that today so uh, thank you for your feedback, and again, that's not a discussion item tonight, but it will be on the agenda in December. Yes, okay. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you, and thank you, Dutch Stockton, for your <clears throat> continued diligence. You woke us up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the passion. It's the passion. <laughs> Never have a problem here in Cary. <laughs> all right. Thank you, President. Um, Item three, consent agenda. I've had no request to remove any items, so I will entertain a motion and a second. I move that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Do we have any more? Or is Do we what? Okay, no, that was it. Okay, oh. I just wanted to make sure. Sorry. I guess we got a motion and a second. Yes. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Passes. 
Item 4A, approval of 2016-17 district improvement plan, Dr. Stockton. Okay, I'll ask Dr. Noll to come up and present that item. <clears throat> Good evening, President and Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Annually, at our administration and our district level planning and decision making committee work to create the district improvement mm -hmm. plan. In addition to meeting specific state statutes, the plan highlights our district strategic goals and outlines the objectives, strategies, and programs that will guide us in reaching our goals. The plan has been available for your review, and I remind you that this is a living document. It's one that we'll review and revise throughout the year. At this time, we seek your approval of the 2016-2017 District Improvement Plan. Entertain the motion. So moved. And a second. Second. Any discussion or questions? Everybody's had a chance to review. Yes. Okay. All those signify by raising your right hand. Opposed, like sign. Item uh, 4B, approval of 2016-17 campus improvement plan, Dr. Stockton. Okay, Dr. Phillips, would you present this item, please? Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. Each year, schools are required to develop a campus improvement plan with the assistance of their site-based decision-making committees. The purpose of the campus improvement plans is to address how each campus will improve student performance. Over the past few weeks, as members of the board, you have had an opportunity to re review these plans that were submitted by the schools. <coughs> campus improvement plans must assess the academic achievement using the Texas Academic Performance Reports and then schools set performance objectives. Goals and objectives support the district improvement plan that you just heard about, as well as the state's goal to ensure that all Texas children have access to a quality education. Each of our schools has worked diligently to ensure their campus improvement plan captures current strategies being implemented. And again, these are also living documents that can be modified throughout the year to meet the needs of the campus. This evening, we ask that you approve the campus improvement plans for the 2016-17 school year. Entertain a motion and a second. So move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion, questions? I have a, I have a question. Sure. I, as I read through the campus improvement plans, can you remind me, I believe there was, was it two schools that did not meet standard, as I recall, that had some improvements? Right. We, well, we have one school that's one. an improvement required, and that's, that's Houston. Houston. Mm -hmm. okay. And then okay. Austin is in the second, is out, but they're yeah. considered formally FIR. Right. And, and so will we have to have continued reporting on Austin? I know we will on Sam Houston. Yes. We will have to also. For the end of this year. If they if they meet everything this year, they can fall off. 2016, 17. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's correct. Okay. okay. All right. I really, I, I, I appreciate that document. It was a lot of information. It looks like there's a lot of, of work that is being done and going to be done at Sam Houston. Yes. Um, I really appreciate the staff of Sam Houston and their involvement as well. Uh, it takes a community to improve, I think, and I, I see that that's happening. And I just want to applaud you and the entire team and everyone at Sam Houston that was involved in that. They have been amazing. They, they are jumping in with their whole heart, and I know things are going to go well this year. We're very we want, proud we of them. Want, we want that very much. Yeah. We want Sam Houston to be back above the line. Thank you. Thank you. My only additional comment of reading through all these was how there were so many similarities, and yet there was just little tweaks specific to each campus. And I really liked seeing their personality because each campus is so different coming out in their improvement plans and yet so similar. So thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Okay. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Item uh, 5A, 2017-18 school calendar information, Dr. Stockton. Okay, I'm going to invite Dr. Null back to the podium to introduce that item. <clears throat> All right, good evening once again. Tonight is a kickoff and just an information item for you as we begin the 2017-2018 uh, school calendar process. Just a quick timeline. We will begin to work tomorrow with the uh, district level team uh, to develop some draft items that will then go out. We'll post them online from November through January uh, to receive feedback from the public. And we'll, uh, in January, when that district level team meets, we will uh, work to, to 
come up with a recommendation for you and we'll be back in February to ask you to approve a calendar. So tonight is a, an opportunity for me just to share with you a few of the items that are that are out there and if you have any feedback that you'd like me to take back to the committee as we work through this, I'd be happy to do so. Um, the calendar is uh, a little different for next year than it has been. It's that we, we hit that magic time when the calendar flips on us and so it's not uh, as easy a process as it has been in the last few years where it's just a one day moves and basically you can build the same calendar and, and move forward. Um, what we have historically done, anticipate doing uh, again this year is 178 days of instruction for students, three early release days throughout the year and 187 day work schedule for our teachers. Now one of the um, items that we'll be in heavy discussion on will be the start date for school. Uh, as Dr. Stockton mentioned uh, earlier tonight about the District of Innovation, that gives us a flexibility that we've not previously had if we do choose to move forward with that. The uh, statute says that we can not start school before the fourth Monday in August. So as we talked about the calendar flip, so next year that is August 28th. Um, so if we stick with the, the standard schedule, we wouldn't begin until August 28th. If we uh, choose to go uh, the District of Innovation route, then we would have an option to go earlier. I would tell you that we've received feedback of, of the 21st being a potential date, also the 16th being a potential date, um, which is only six days earlier than we started this year. That would be starting on a Wednesday, and we've heard that from, from campus staff and parents, that that's a nice way to ease back into the school year, so that is a, a, a topic of discussion that we will have. Uh, we also hear uh, quite often from our instructional staff that a holiday in October is appreciated. <laughs> just our uh, teacher clocks just tell us that it's time in October, typically, to, for everybody to get a, a reset opportunity. Thanksgiving break, we've now been for multiple years taking a week at Thanksgiving, and um, that, that comes with very positive feedback, so I don't know that that's a, something that we would recommend changing. <laughs> feels, feels really good today. Uh, today, that looks like a great plan. Um, the, the end date for the first semester, you know, we, we would love to have a completely balanced number of days, semesters, that, that's hard to achieve. Um, it really affects our secondary schools more than our elementaries. Um, we have, there's sort of a, uh, a pendulum that swings back and forth, but we have really lately tried to end our first semester before the winter break, which is good for students that are moving. It's good for our secondary kids, honestly, to get a break. Uh, that, that's a true break for them, typically, at winter break if the semester ends, and that's a, uh, a positive thing. Now, winter break is another um, area that I, I would draw your attention to because of the way the calendar falls. We really will have two options, uh, I think, with the winter break. Mm -hmm. And it can it can skew early or it can skew late. And, and I don't know if that makes great sense to you, but I'll give you maybe just a couple of examples and uh, just to see if you have any feedback. We could get out of school on the 15th, the last day being December 15th, and, and then head to holiday. And we would then return on January 2nd for the teacher staff development and uh, the kids would then return on the third, which is very similar to what we're doing this year. That's similar to our plan for this year. Or we may choose to skew late, a later holiday break, which might have us go into school till the 20th or the 21st. But then we would not return back until teachers would return back on the 8th and students would return back on the 9th. Now, I would tell you that looking at historic We've gone back and looked at some of our historical calendars. We've done it both ways, historically. Um, the, the benefit of the, uh, the later skewed break is it does help balance by three or four days semesters, but that's not a huge deal. Uh, it, you know, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't affect us too much, but those, no. that'll be a conversation. And then Sorry. spring break, we typically go with the University of Texas and Texas A&M, and that's May 12th. Um, is, which is lines up with the same March. I'm sorry. I said that this morning too. March 12th. So, uh, which pretty much lines up with what we did this year as well. Um, and then when you look at end dates, uh, you know what we know is we're going to have 178 days for students and 187 <laughs> days for teachers. So if you start later, you end later. That's just the way it works. Um, on on either of the the 
um, earlier start dates, it appears that we could um, finish the school year the week that ends June 1st. Um, you know, with the last day for students either being May 31st or June 1st, those would be possibilities. Uh, under the standard calendar that we start on August 28th, we would end school on Friday, August or June 8th, Friday, June 8th for students and be the June 9th for teachers uh, more than likely. So um, happy to accept any feedback so if you can give me direction that you might have me share with the committee as we work through this. Much like the spring break is, uh, you know, kind of kind of go with the flow on what everybody's doing. Yes, sir. What do you, I mean, do you see, obviously, if they're not district of innovation in that one area, they, they can't start before the 28th. Correct. And so they're going to be kicked into the June 8th almost for a certain week. Somehow. Yeah, the, the, on what kind of holidays they get. Yes, sir. Many campuses are not, I mean, many districts have not yet finalized their calendar because they're going through the district of innovation process as well. One of the things with the winter break that we have enjoyed over the, the last few years is having three weekends in our winter break. And that's why you see you know, our winter break is actually going to be a little longer than the normal 10 days. It's going to have to be 12 days, kind of one way or the other, to achieve that three weekends. But that's a big deal to our parents and you know, daycare and all those different things. It's, it's, a, it's nice for travel. What I've seen, the only district that I've seen so far that has posted calendars for comment is Clear Creek, and they don't do th the three weekends for winter break. So it, that's something that we feel strongly about. And the, from feedback, I think we do feel fairly strongly about that. Um, ours will look different from theirs. And this will be a year of everybody's calendar being different, uh, especially until we get a handle on, you know, see everybody do it the first time. Dr. No, can you tell me again if we started on August the 16th, that Wednesday? Yes, sir. What would be the end date again? And, th and this is just a draft that I worked right. on today, so this is not, I, I wouldn't put this in. And assuming all the I'm, normal breaks. Right, I'm, right. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that, if we started on August 16th, um, what what we would achieve, would that would achieve a, um, a day off in October, which was mentioned. Right. Uh, it would give us a, a one additional day on the winter break, getting out on the 20th instead of the 21st and then our final day of school for students would be May 31st and then the teacher work day would be June 1st so you could 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 you start on the 16th and still get the make the last day December the 15th for the end of the semester yes sir well and that still gives the three weeks yes if we if we finish the third of January for the students and second for the teachers yes sir if we finish on the 20th and if we, if we let's say we went to the winter break on the 20th we would have 84 days in our first semester so if we pushed it back to the 15th we would just lose three days in that first semester which would be 81 we've done it with 78 yeah. in the past yeah. so it's, okay. it, it absolutely can be done I, yes sir I think those three weekends are important for parents and students and faculty and staff as well that's important to me for our, for them <laughs> yes sir as it is doesn't affect me, me i gotta work you know? right. <laughs> yeah as it, as it is to me i'm i'm in favor of that too of course the assumption being that we could start on the 16th yes sir i like the idea of starting in the middle of the week i do too i think that gives a transition time a couple of days to you know get right. back in the swing of things and if we were to begin on the 21st the difference the differences were where 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 would those days be made up we would we would lose the october day there's three days we'd have to be made up right you know from the 16th to the 21st we would lose the October day we would have one less day at the Christmas break and we would go to school one day longer that's where those three days c could play in okay. my only comment on the thing uh, the October holiday yes. I really like to see in conjunction with the half day that we normally do in October if we're still doing the early release day in October that we make it an early release on Friday and Monday the day that off. is a great idea <laughs> and, for, for planning purposes and as it as it as the numbers work out if we start on the 16th that is exactly how it will work we okay. our first nine weeks will end on Aug October 6th which means October 6th would become a half day and October 9th is Columbus Day so that would be which, an extended that'd be great. Yes, I, for I, I, I remember having Columbus Day off as a child you know there's some 
nostalgia there. Yes, ma'am. Um, the other comment I would make is I really, I do like getting out earlier. Um, you know, I think that the further we go, uh, family vacations, they like to start early as possible anyway. I think we lose, especially at the elementary level, when they don't have seniors with final, or kids, you know, in secondary with finals, they're gone that week of June anyway. So that might be a way to keep the them. May 31st? Mm -hmm. And on May 31st? Yeah. Summer yeah, summer school. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. No, yes, no, yes, sir. No, I guess no matter when the starting date is, a graduation date still that week of May 28, 29. Well, I guess it's 28th is Memorial Day. 28. Yes, sir. So if we could follow the same plan that we did this year. We did Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of that week. We could follow. Now, I say that we are also dependent upon the pavilion. So once we set our calendar, I start working with the pavilion to establish dates that would be our target dates absolutely now if we if we went the next week and went further then we would probably yeah. push them a week back so long as it's yeah, not no, when jimmy buffett's there we're good okay. exactly <laughs> yeah well i don't i keep trying to get them to bump him for us they just don't do it i don't understand i'm interested to see what district level brings back to us yeah i think it will be it'll be great discussion tomorrow i think so any other questions or comments Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item five uh, B: Select construction manager at risk for 2018 life cycle. Dr. Stockton. Uh, Mr. Foster, would you pre please present that item? Good evening, President, husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It's my pleasure to bring forward for your consideration and approval the selection of a construction manager at risk for our 2018 uh, life cycle projects. These projects cover our mechanical, electrical, plumbing, air conditioning, uh, athletics, building envelope, and other minor improvements to keep our buildings well maintained. In November of 2015, we selected PBK as the architect for this project, for our 2018 life cycle projects. Since then, PBK has helped us by preparing and publishing a request for qualifications for contractors to submit. We had two companies respond to our request for qualifications, and after reviewing their uh, their statements and their packages, we had invited both companies to participate in the second step of our two-step selection process. After that, GTT Construction was selected as the offeror, submitted the proposal, determined to be the best value for the district based on our published ranking criteria. We've made the scores a part of our uh, packet tonight, so those can be made public upon uh, approval. And then uh, <coughs> At this point, we're asking for your approval for this selection. I have a motion or second. I make the motion. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. Motion to second. Any discussion or question? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you very much. Item 5C, capital improvement update. All right. <laughs> This time I'd like to bring you along on an update of our capital improvements we have underway throughout the district. We're going to start with Grand Oaks High School. Uh, this high school is on schedule, scheduled to open for the school year starting August of 2018. As you can see from our photographs, the building is taking shape quite nicely. The most of the structural steel is erected at this point. We expect to be uh, hung out on the steel uh, by the end of this year. Uh, Inside that structure, you're seeing the MEP systems, the plumbing, electrical, mechanical uh, systems uh, coming, coming into uh, their uh, what we call rough-in state. We've also begun the masonry work here, so the, the interior walls and the exterior walls of this building are beginning to come together as well, and we'll be closing it in uh, over the next several months. Our safety and security project, uh, we're nearing the end of phase one. Phase one runs through the uh, through January. Uh, this project is security upgrade, so it's cameras, it's servers, it's vestibule improvements, access control, things of that nature. Uh, we're running through the process of learning what we did right and wrong in phase one, so we can improve phase two, bringing forward in the spring uh, our phase two package to begin that work uh, next year. Grangerland Intermediate, where we're building some additional classroom space, this project is on schedule. It's scheduled to turn over for the students to use when they come back from the winter break this year. So you can see from our pictures, the uh, exterior is coming along quite nicely. 
interior, all the fixtures, the mechanical, the equipment, all the all the uh, all the hard things that make the building come together are in. Uh, the next step of this space is bringing in the finishes, the carpet, uh, finishing the paint, and putting the, the finish coats on things so that we can begin moving furniture and, and our equipment in uh, over the month of December. At Lucille Bradley Elementary School, uh, this project is on schedule, scheduled to open for students in August of 2017. Uh, this building is coming along nicely. The building structure is uh, erected at this point. They're working on the roofing systems, uh, as well as the exterior masonry systems are coming online uh, for this building as well. Inside the building, you can see the mechanical systems, and what we're looking at here is a picture of the uh, from the common area looking into the, the kitchen. Uh, so those systems are coming along, coming along nicely. At the Woodlands College Park, where we're doing a robotics edition, uh, this project is on schedule as well, scheduled to turn over for our students to use in the spring of 2017. Uh, mm -hmm. The slab is in place. Uh, what you're looking at here is the elevator pit for that, uh, that two-story section of the building to go in place. And the structural steel is the, the where we're at now. So that building is, is coming together. It'll very quickly become a, a shell that we're working on the inside. And lastly, in this building, we're working on our network operations center, uh, which there's not a whole lot of pictures to show you at this <laughs> point. Uh, but next month we'll be able to see some progress photos of that, that area that's working in the, in the building B, as we call it, uh, for this building as we develop those offices and the infrastructure that's going to carry us into the future here with our student growth as we expect it. And that's our update. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Uh, Mr. Husband, before Mr. Foster leaves, I wanted to say something. Uh, I wanted to publicly congratulate you for completing your master's degree recently. I'm very proud of you. I know the rest of the board is proud of you as well. It's hard working full time and going to school, and we're proud of you. Well, I, 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 I appreciate that. Thanks, Thanks again. Appreciate it. And I might add, uh, one of the recipients of uh, education of scholarships Foundation. from the Conroe Education Foundation for mm -hmm. existing professionals and uh, another another successful. Uh, uh, venture for them as well. Thank yes, you. sir. It was a big help. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Item 6A, final results. New money and refunding bonds series 2016A. Dr. Stock. All right. I'm going to ask uh, Darren Rice to come up and introduce the item and share the good news. Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. We have some great news to share with you this evening. It is my pleasure to introduce Mr. John Roebuck. He is the district's financial advisor, and he is here to present the results of our new money and refunding bond series 2016A. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Uh, Ross, excuse me, Ross. sorry. <laughs> President Husbands, member of the board, Dr. Stockton. Uh, it's, I'm always excited to come share good news, and uh, I do have some good news to share. I believe you also have this in your packet, but I saw this on the screen there. Um, if you'll humor me, let me start by going through the current bond market environment. Uh, we stopped this chart when we sold the bonds on October 27th. Um, you'll see that the current rate was 3.32% on the bond buyer index. Uh, I do want to point out it's better to be lucky than good, because right now that index is at 3.56, and I bet by the end of the week it's going to be closer to 3.8% after the election. Yeah. So we've seen uh, the municipal market uh, skyrocket over the last couple of days, last couple of trading days, and so we uh, were lucky to get in before and take advantage of the low rates we've seen in the last couple of months. A summary of the sources and uses on the next page. Uh, we broke this out. We did sell two million, excuse me, 206,675,000 in bonds. That was broken out into a new money piece that generated $150 million in proceeds for the city for the construction projects, and then also a refunding of about $69,155,000. I'll go with the refunding first, start with that. We did sell $69,155,000 in bonds to refund $72,295,000 in bonds. The bonds that we refunded had an average rate of a 4.987%. The all cost on the refunding bonds we issued was 2.493. and because of the spread of those interest rates, we saved the district $9,314,300. And that's on a PV percentage is about 9.873%. Very pleased with those results. Uh, the new money, we issued 137,520,000 bonds, again, to generate proceeds of 
for construction projects. And the all-cost interest rate, which again includes issuance cost and, and all the factors of the bond issue, was a 3.274%. We are scheduled to close these, uh, both, well, this bond issue, both sections of this bond issue, there was one bond issue, on Tuesday, November 29th. And just to leave any concerns, those rates are locked in. They're not changing. We're done. So it's all, all we got to do is get Attorney General uh, approval and then uh, closing letter and closing all those monies to be wired to your accounts. On page three, this is the final debt service requirements. A lot of numbers on this page. Uh, I do want to highlight the yellow column there. That is how the savings broke out based on the sale. Again, $9,314,300. Uh, and again, the new money piece on the, the last couple columns did generate $150 million in proceeds. Uh, this next page is kind of a summary of that. Uh, we did come out to show you, I guess it was on September 20th, an estimated savings of about $8.3 million. Uh, we beat that, obviously, with the actual results of about $9.3 million. But I also want to point out the new money debt service requirements. We originally showed you a debt service requirements of about $260,000. That's principal and interest. That's total debt service requirements of the life of the bonds. And based on the results, the lower interest rate we received, it was $233 million. So we the difference, and I won't call savings because it's not savings, it's just the difference between budget and actual is about $27 million. So if you combine those two, the difference in savings and difference in debt service requirements, it's a difference of about $28.6 million for the, for the district. And then this is something we haven't really shown you before, but I do want to point out just the, the status you'll have in the market. This is a comparison of some school district deals that have permit school fund AAA rating that enter the market. The day before you and with you in the market at the same time, we looked at DelVal ISD, which is about $31 million, Ector County ISD, which is about $49 million of principals sold, obviously Conroe ISD, $206 million, and then Mansfield ISD, $32 million. I challenge you to look across this and tell me a place where any of these beat us in the yield. You all smoked everybody on this chart here. Uh, <laughs> lower yield than anybody out there. Uh, now, I will point out that some of the ratings on these other issues are a little lower, but again, some of these you beat by five, six, seven, eight basis points. With PSF, you usually don't, you don't see a spread that large, usually two or three basis points. So your name, the size, and just your reputation got you a great, great result in the market. It's kind of like having a good credit score. The exactly. better your credit score, the better... Uh, yeah, the lower the cost of the credit. Exactly, to you. exactly. But usually it's not this big. Usually it's like, again, one notch is, you know, in rating is usually equal to two or three basis points, but in some cases, y'all were nine, eight or nine basis points better. Mm -hmm. So, very pleased with the results. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about the, the results or any uh, comments. Outstanding job. I think we picked Unbelievable. the best timing in the world as far as uh, interest rates. Uh, again, I, I agree with you. I don't think we're going to see these again. No. But what a great opportunity we have. So if you go back one slide, and Mr. Rice, this may be related more. So as I, as I read this total difference in debt requirement, that means that really what we budgeted for our new issue of bonds, we expected we were going to have to spend $27 million more to pay off those bonds that we're not going to have to pay. So I understand it's not savings, but it's also expense we're not going to have to pay Correct. at some point in the future. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. We're already modeling our debt projections based off of our sale because our debt projections were based off of the higher costs. So right. it's very it's trending very well. Absolutely. Good. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you, Great. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Before you get too far out of 6D financial reports, start talking. Mr. Rice, if you'll present those. Thank you, John. Thank you, Mr. Thank Mr. Rogan. You. You're welcome back anytime with results yeah. like that. I like that kind of news. You're always welcome. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing just how a day or two in the market can change. Um, okay, President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, I'm here to present the financial statements for the district for the month of October. Once again, these statements will include our general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we'll look at this evening is our balance sheet. Once again, our balance sheet includes our assets, our liabilities, and fund balances. Each month, we like to take a look at our cash and investments, and we'll concentrate once again on our general fund. We had cash on hand of $13,300, bank deposits of $909,000, investments in our pools, 
93 million, other investments of 29 million, and investments with TCG Investment Advisors of $50,855,000 for a total of $174 million. Usually don't show you all this this early, but we're starting to collect some taxes, so I wanted to show, hey, we're, we're ahead of where we were last year, hey. so, so that's good news. Uh, you know, double percent, so that's great. <laughs> Next statement we'll look at is our income statement. The income statement includes our revenues and expenditures for the district. Uh, if you look in the general fund column, you will see that our, our largest uh, source of revenues is from our, our state program revenues. We've received our state funding in September and October, so we got those two payments in. And then we can also look at our expenditures by our major category. And once again, payroll leads the largest expenditure in our general fund. This is our 2015 bond referendum status update for the month. We've encumbered and expended $215.4 million. We have an estimate to complete of $300.5 million for a projected forecast of $515.9 million, leaving us with about $4.3 million worth of contingency. And what we've all been waiting for, mm. uh, self-funded insurance plan. Um, the month of October, we had a, a good month in October, as you can see. We had total revenues, $3,793,000. Total expenses, $3,051,000. For revenues over expenses of $742,000. Uh, would like to say that I've been tracking November daily, just seeing. Uh, we're still trending very well in November, not quite as good as we did in October, but I, I still think there'll be positive results for November, so that's, that's trending very well. Um, participation at our wellness center, uh, we were averaging about 432 uh, visits per month there. And once again, I know we had a question last month, but we will be meeting with Memorial Herman tomorrow to discuss staffing and then also propose new site up north. So hopefully we can work something out there. And pardon me real quick. Uh, mm -hmm. Claims was higher in September, correct? Because we still had some layover claims. We still had from some run out from the, from from the, the previous plan. plan. And, yes. Okay. Just, and does this show the transfer of the funds that we this had do, this as a part does of not. the consent agenda? Th this is strictly cash. This just revenue, Prior. revenue and expenses. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. So this is not fund <laughs> yeah. balance. Thank you. Correct. Yeah, not fund balance. Okay. Now we'll look at our investments for the month. Our par value of our portfolio at the end of October was $302.6 million. The wham of our pools, once again, is one day, and they're yielding about 74 basis points. The wham of our other investments, 184 days, these are the investments that we hold that are less than a year, yielding over a percent now. And I think you'll see this trend, even with our longer-term investments that TCG Investment Advisors is 578 days, and we're yielding a little over a percent there also. So the wham of our combined portfolio is 113 days now, and we're yielding 80 basis points. And our benchmark, which is the 90-day uh, T-bill, is a little over 30 <laughs> basis points. So we're still performing well against that. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Questions for Mr. Rice? The only yep. question I had is that, that transfer that we made in the consent agenda, so that should keep us the anticipated Keep us flush. Yes, sir. That, that, will, that will sure us up as of August 31st okay. for our year end, okay. and then we should be good moving forward. Got it. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Go move. Second. All those in favor, please stand. <laughs>